In the next few sessions, we're going to talk about roto or rotoscoping. So roto is the art of drawing a shape and then animating that shape. There are a couple different tools in Nuke that can do roto. First is the roto node. You can call that up with the O hotkey. And then there's also the roto paint tool. Roto paint encompasses everything that the roto node has, but it has some additional options in terms of painting and cloning. We're not going to discuss roto paint in this particular chapter. So first up, let's talk about the roto node in and of itself. So if you open it up, you'll see that it's a little bit different than your other tools in that it has a toolbar and a menu bar inside the viewer itself. If we go ahead and draw a shape, and by default, when you bring in a tool, it puts you into draw mode, and your draw modes are on your toolbar here. So we're going to draw with a bezier. And there's some discussion if bezier or b-spline is the better drawing option. A b-spline actually looks like this. As you can see, the way they work is a little bit different. I personally prefer bezier. Some people prefer b-spline. It's whatever floats your boat. All right, so now we've drawn a couple of shapes and our toolbars have changed here. So we have a few different options and these are mostly display based. So you can turn points on, you can hide different elements, you can change the way that the handles are drawn, you can turn those on and off. The other big one is ripple delete and that's this option. What this does is let you modify keyframes across all keyframes. This is an extremely powerful tool, but it can also be extremely dangerous. I highly recommend reading up on it and playing with it a little bit before you use it in production. The other really big button here is the auto key button. So this turns on auto key. And what that means is whenever you move a point, Nuke will set a key. So if I move to a different place in my time, move my spline, it'll automatically set a key. By default, auto key is turned on in Nuke. And if you go to your main preferences, under the nodes menu, there's an auto key roto shapes. By default, this is turned on. I personally prefer to turn it off. I like to explicitly tell my roto shapes when I want them to auto key. And that's because most of the shapes I use are static to begin with. And that way I can scrub to any point in my comp, modify my shapes and not worry about creating extra keyframes or creating keyframes at all. So let's talk about the actual guts of the property bin with a roto tool. So we have our roto tab and that consists of a few different areas. Our first one is our output and then we have some format settings and then we have our individual shape settings. So we have opacity feather and feather fall off as well as our spline key controls here. And these are relevant to whichever shape is selected in our layers panel. You can see these change when I click on different splines. And these just allow us to change the opacity, change the feather. One other thing to note is all splines actually have two splines. If you see this little handle off to the side, this controls the feather handle. You can also control that with the E hotkey. And all of these tools use hotkeys and I highly recommend learning them. For example, the Z key changes the cusping. So Z gives it more cusp, Shift Z gives it less cusp. E does the same with feather or removes the feather. You can control these this way and in your selection tools you can actually change which kind of tools you're selecting. That way you don't have to be very precise. You can just select your feathers or just select your main splines. But you can also feather using these options. So we can feather the whole shape this way. And then feather fall off actually changes the way that that opacity falls off. We have a plus and a minus down here. So if you select your root folder and you hit plus, it'll create a new folder. Also, all of these can be named, which is a really important thing for keeping things organized, especially if you have a lot of different shapes. And then the minus just deletes that layer. Moving on, we have our visibility controls. So this turns the shapes on or off in terms of being able to see them. We have a lock option and this locks them so that you can't modify them in the viewer. Next up is the actual color of the shape of the spline in the GUI. And then we have the color of the shape itself. So this way you can output different colors with it. 
I personally don't use this much. I would rather use a constant and then use a masking operation to create colored shapes. That way I can very clearly see what I'm doing in my node graph. We then have an invert button. I would also shy away from this because it sort of breaks the workflow of working additively and working pre-multiplied. If you're gonna use the invert button, you can likely use a merge operation and a masking operation that will achieve the same result, but allow you to keep a smaller additive piece. Next up, we actually have merge operations inside of our tools. So this allows us to do some math, like we can subtract one shape from another, and do a couple of interesting things here. Again, I like to do this with merge nodes, so I typically leave this set to over and I don't mess with it too much. Next is life. So life, and we'll actually cover this in the lifetime tab because that controls these particular options. But you can set the roto shape to only exist for certain frames. Color. Color gives us the option to set different inputs. So in this case, we're actually using a solid color, but we could use the input from a different input pipe. And if you actually connect this to something, you'll see it creates another input and we have quite a few of those. And so that's what that is looking at. So it'll pull the input from that BG1, BG2, and it'll use that input to draw into the shape. All right, so that's sort of the main Roto tab. Let's talk about transform. Transform allows you to add transform data to a spline without it being connected to the individual spline points and adding keyframes for those. I see this a lot where people will expression link a tracker or a transform node in so that they can do some animation using those tools and not doing that animation directly on the keys. I prefer to do this explicitly and just use a transform node and leave the transform tab alone. Motion blur. So if we go back to our layer sheet, we have a button that toggles on and off motion blur as well. This is controlled by the motion blur tab. These are your standard controls, so you can make it longer, shorter, you can change if the offset shape. This controls the source. So we can change our color source here. We can also control our blending modes. We can change our color a little easier to use than maybe some of these buttons in your layer sheet. Clone. This actually doesn't do anything in this particular usage because that's part of the Roto Paint tool. Lifetime. This is where we would set our controls for our life. So we have all start to end, single frame, start to frame, and frame to frame. And then you can key in a specific frame range for your tool. This is a really useful option. It helps really keep everything decluttered. Next is tracking. If you're using a roto shape to do your planar track, these are some of your controls for your planar tracker. And then we have node, which is a standard tab on most tools where you can set labels, hide inputs, and do some other admin stuff. So we talked a little bit about keyframes and how those work, and that's using this button or changing that in your preferences. Um, I also wanna talk about channels and some default settings. So by default, Roto nodes come into Nuke as alpha only. They don't have any RGB data. And from, a, from my working experience, I like my Roto shapes to be RGBA and not just A, because I'm constantly having to toggle between my alpha and my RGB to see what they're doing. The other thing that's important to be aware of when you're using roto shapes is they come in default with their clip set to format. And when their clip is set to format, it means any shape that happens outside of your format box, it won't render that data. So by setting this to no clip, this shape will now render, and you can see our bounding box jumped out here, and that'll allow it to be transformed into frame later. Say you have a big tracking move and you have shapes that start off screen, or they begin on screen and then move off screen. This allows that to maintain its image data and create a bounding box that then can be manipulated later. So what I like to do is I actually change my menu PY. I use this set of code right here to create defaults for that tool. That's one of the really nice things about Nuke is you can use a little bit of Python to create de tool defaults and those tool defaults will then load that tool set up ready to go the way you want it. So in this case I set it up to load my output as RGBA 
and my clip two to no clip. You can also use this on other tools. If you're trying to change motion blur behavior or other defaults, it's a really handy thing to learn.